I am a servant of Islam. I try to uh, make Islam uh, understood and practiced in a way that is closest to the revelation that Allah sent to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I do that through a number of means, education, writing books, research, uh, and advocacy in Muslim organizations. Um, I don't uh, identify necessarily with any really geographic or political uh, place uh, in the world. I see that Islam is needed everywhere and Islam is needed in all capacities. And that's where I'm coming from. The book started with a fatwa that I was writing for the European Council for Fatwa and Research, of which I'm a member, that has to do with questions about women and the mosque. Uh, are women allowed in the mosque? So when I started to research the topic, I realized that women were not just allowed in the mosque, but they have a great role to play in the mosque. And therefore, the fatwa turned out to be 30 pages. Uh, when I revised it, it turned out to be a book, really. I noticed from the study of history that the role of Muslim women rises and falls depending on the rise and fall of the Muslim civilization. Uh, the times in history when our civilization was at its peak, um, primarily the time of the Prophet وسلم, and the early times of Islam, the role of Muslim women was at its peak. And when we started to uh, decline uh, as a civilization, when our way of life started to be uh, distant from our values as Muslims, the role of Muslim women started to decline as well. So I'm hoping that uh, the, the role of Muslim women as it grows would bring about a change in our Muslim societies and to humanity in general. It's very important for women to regain the place in the masjid for the sake of the role of the masjid that is intended by the Sharia, ah, intended by the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The masjid in Islam is not a temple, is not just a place for ruku' and sujood. Ruku' and sujood and praying is part of the role of the masjid. But the masjid is supposed to be the center of the community. And you cannot have a vibrant community without the center of the community being healthy. It cannot be healthy if women are absent and or if they are sent to a side room or a basement or whatever with the children crammed. It cannot be healthy if the children do not have a place in the masjid, growing up in it with their fathers and mothers there and learning to be good Muslims. It cannot be healthy and it cannot play its role as an institution if the Muslim youth are not meeting in the masjid thinking about issues of the community and about Islam in the masjid. And for the wider community, it is a shame that we may misrepresent Islam by marginalizing women in the mosque or not allowing them in the mosque. This is a gross misrepresentation of what Islam is about. And it gives Islam a bad name that Islam does not deserve when uh, non-Muslims who do not know anything about Islam see that the design of the masjid itself is not fair to women uh, and is not representative of what Muslims talk about in terms of the values and opportunity and allowing men and women to thrive and knowledge and all of these things that we talk about. Masjid is not representative of that. I am wishing for this work to be a small part in a big mission that uh, we should all carry at this stage. We need to rethink the way we understand and practice Islam. Uh, I'm hoping for this book to be part of this shift that we need to make in our minds and in our practice of Islam, not just in the area of women and the mosque. This is a small uh, part of our problems. But the bigger problem of marginalizing Muslim women 
and not giving them the rights that are given to them by the Quran and the Prophet of Islam وسلم, and the wider uh, problem of the plight of women in general, Muslim and non-Muslim, and how they are not uh, included in uh, scientific study in general, theological studies, and how they do not play a fair role and an equitable role in service of their religion, as well as the, the wider uh, issue of Islam being relevant for contemporary times. And it will not be relevant for contemporary times if we continue to think about Islam in terms of history, in terms of the opinions and the books and geography and currency and food of the past rather than of the present uh, in terms of the way the economy and politics and so on was done in the past, not in the present. It's very important for Islam to be rethought so that it addresses the present world and the present issues and the present uh, dilemmas that humanity faces. I had two different responses from the attendees of the course. Uh, one response that was very excited about the uh, content of the book and the course, alhamdulillah, and very enthusiastic about going back to their communities and making a change, a real change, uh, in the way the masjid operates and so forth. We had a discussion about how we can change the operation of the masjid through the ideas that the book is offering. I had a different response as well from some of the attendees that is worried about Islam, uh, about the fixed matters of Islam and the constant issues in Islam. And you are um, going against the Sunnah and you are diluting what Islam is about and so forth. And alhamdulillah, I affirmed that I'm not going against the Sunnah. I'm actually uh, confirming that the Sunnah is an illustration of the Quran. I'm going against some of the narrations that misrepresent Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad would never have said some of these ugly things about women that I mentioned in the book that uh, I followed you know, the narrations technically and concluded that they are not authentic narrations. They were lies about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and so forth. So I affirmed uh, to those who were worried that this is not where I'm coming from. I don't come from any Eastern or Western culture or uh, particular ideology other than the Quran, other than the word of Allah. Uh, I'm trying to defend the word of Allah from um, misrepresenting, uh, misrepresenting it, uh, the words of Muhammad وسلم, from misnarrating it, uh, and Islam from being misapplied in our life. So Alhamdulillah, in general, a very positive feedback, Alhamdulillah. There is a lot of hope, Alhamdulillah, especially in the new generation of Muslims. I see young men and women around the world who are excellent representatives of what Islam is about, uh, excellent um, minds and hearts that understand Islam in a, in a brilliant way. Uh, the problem is that our generation is not giving them a chance. And I tell youth around the world that if our generation and the generations before that, obviously, don't give you a chance, then form your own institutions, build your own mosques, go do your own initiatives so that you take a place in the world. Do not stick to the organizations, institutions, including mosques, that uh, do not represent Islam as it is supposed to be represented. And therefore, yes, the hope is there, but we need to give our youth, our young men and women, a chance so that they manage our institutions, including the mosques, and they uh, do with these institutions what they think is best for Islam. And this is...